God is always a wonderful way to start our day. Go to chapter 3 of the book of James. We're going to be looking at verse number 13 and following. And what James is going to do, and we're going to be talking about this over the next several uh, sessions together, is he's uh, showing us what worldly wisdom is about and what uh, godly wisdom or heavenly wisdom is about. Beginning in verse 13, James says, Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and are self-seeking in your heart, or do not have, or, or do boast about, uh, and boast about, and lie about, excuse me, do not lie and boast about the truth, the wisdom that this describes does not descend from above, but it is earthly, sensual, demonic. For everyone that is envious or self-seeking, that confusion and every kind of evil thing is going to be there. What he's talking about is that there is a wisdom in the way that people think. Wisdom is reflected in our words and in our works. And if we are thinking in a certain direction, uh, that's the way we're going to act and that's the way we're going to speak. And he describes this kind of wisdom as a secular wisdom. In fact, he gives a threefold source of it. He says it's earthly, it's sensual, it's demonic. So first of all, it's it's secular. That is, it's of this world. It's wisdom that comes from the way the world looks at things. When you watch your TV, when you read articles, it's the wisdom of the world. It tells you how to think and how to act and how to react. All human philosophy, theology, psychology, science, sociology, all these disciplines, if they do not come from the Bible, that is, they do not come from heaven or from the Word of God, then they are going to be uh, secular. It's going to be full of contingents. He talks about that. It's going to be envious of one another and jealous of one another, arrogant. It's going to be untrue. In many of the disciplines of which I've described, uh, they come from a source of this world. For instance, science. Darwin has influenced science and others following Darwin. That uh, the world was not created, but it was uh, evolved. And therefore, people listen to the wisdom of the world. This is div divisive. It's untrue. Freud in psychology. Karl Marx in politics or uh, Rudolf Bultmann or Paul Tillich in, in uh, theology. All these are people who follow the wisdom of the world and therefore are not a God. So first of all, it's secular. Then it's sensual. He says uh, that it comes from our senses. That is wisdom not from the world so much as from the flesh, that which comes out of us. Uh, this word sensual is associated with the word suke or the word for soul. It comes from the mind of man. It's selfish. It blames others for its own faults. It's its own source of wisdom, and you can't really teach them anything. Then the other kind of wisdom, he says, is satanic. So it's of the world, it's of the flesh, and it's of the devil. He says it's demonic. It comes from Satan. It's the way Satan talks. Would you remember Eve and his temptation of Eve or his temptation of Jesus? It's the way he looks at things. And it always twists the truth. It always is envious. Satan was envious of God, and therefore he tried to place himself above God. And so it comes not from this, uh, from, from God, but it comes from this world, or it comes from the devil, or it comes from our own flesh. Don't seek after that kind of wisdom. Don't listen to the way this world is describing things. Don't walk the way of the world. We're going to be looking at that. And make sure that you have your wisdom from above, and we'll talk about that tomorrow. Let's pray. Father, we recognize the wisdom of this world is hard to overcome. It's hard to, to get a grasp on because it seems so reasonable. But I pray, Father, that you'll help us to overcome by looking at your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.